Welcome to another episode of the Peak Potential Success Show. My name is Fong Chua. I'm an entrepreneur, business strategist, real estate investor, speaker, and also best-selling author. And every single day, I help others unlock the potential and guide them to succeed. Today on the show, we have a fantastic guest. I met this person a few years ago at a conference, and she was one of those highlights of that conference because when her and her husband went up on stage, she they wowed the audience completely. Most people go up there and do a speech, a presentation, ho-hum. No, no, no. They went up there and wowed everybody with this amazing dance, and it was spectacular. Got a standing ovation that people remember for a lifetime. I mean, aside from being a great dancer, I mean, she has, what, six national titles, multiple world championships. They're world-renowned. She's also a, an artist who's toured worldwide. She's an author of many books that opened up a whole new magical universe for people to enjoy and also explore. Uh, she's now in medicine and healing as well. I mean, an entrepreneur who does so many different things and is successful in so many different things. And that's why I'm so excited to have her here today. So please welcome entrepreneur, elite dancer, writer, artist, healer, all that great stuff. Please welcome Laura Cantu. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Awesome. Well, thank you for being here and spending some time with us. So let's just get right into it. How did you become who you are today? I mean, you have so many different accomplishments, uh, namely the dancing, uh, the writing and all kinds of stuff, but you didn't start off going, hey, you know what? I'm going to be all this stuff. So what was your journey? No. So my journey was attending the school of hard knocks. <laughs> <laughs> so growing up, um, my my journey of learning, first, I had to learn how to learn because the way that my family grew up, we did not have the same resources that a lot of other people around me had. So if we wanted something, we had to learn how to either get it ourselves or do it ourselves. You know, whether we wanted to learn how to sew, create jewelry, uh, you know, play sports or get in touch with our bodies. It was all uh, part of a journey that we did not have things handed to us. So whenever you start getting in that mindset of, of learning how to make things and how to be creative enough and, 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 you know, how to design and how to engineer and how to, to figure out how to learn. That's probably the biggest thing that I can say. I learned how to learn. And that's what got me where I am today, because like my journey into Chinese medicine, for instance, I have a master's in oriental medicine. The reason I started pursuing that is because I got a, a very, um, uh, big illness that Western medicine wrote me off. They said, I'm sorry, we can't help you. And instead of just, you know, crawling up in my bed and disappearing and leaving the earth, I said, no, there must be more. There must be more. So I met people in my journey that said, yes, there is more. And so, you know, I started, I learn out of necessity, in other words. <laughs> so you, you talked about learning how to learn. What do you find that is the, the most common mistakes that people have when it comes to learning? Not being open-minded open enough to look at every single direction. Most of us have the need to want to be right more than we have the need to save our lives even. So whenever you start not having, when you drop the need to be right and you can start looking at things from other people's points of view and have an open mind and awareness, that, you know, I'm, I'm in this position today because of everything that I've known, everything that I am. And in order to get myself to the next step, I have to put me aside and what defines me as me and look at things from a different perspective, the way that I normally would not look at it. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. <laughs> so for yourself, was it something, was the entrepreneurial mindset the first thing that comes to mind? Or was it the artistic side? Or is it the, the whole wanting to to become in, into medicine and healing side that came first? Um, I think I was born this way. I don't think I was born to be an entrepreneur. I don't think I was born to be a doctor of oriental medicine or a dancer. I was born to be a free spirit that experiences life to the fullest and helps other people along the way. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just something that's part of my nature. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to the, what, which one kind of came first, was the dancing kind of came first or did they all kind of start at the same time and you kind of worked on all of them at the same oh. time? Oh, okay. I started drawing when I was really little. So I started with art first mm -hmm. and storytelling. So if there's one theme that goes through everything, it's storytelling. 
So in my art, my art would always tell stories. And then whenever I feel, felt like I, you know, I could draw a photo realistically and I got where I wanted with art, then I was like, well, my next challenge is my body because I was really shy and I was one of those girls who, whenever you grew up, you know, you did this and you were really ashamed of your body. And I thought, you know, I can't go through my whole life being ashamed of my body. So what's the next step I can take? Well, I can dance and display it everywhere. You know, <laughs> you went so, from one, one contrast to another contrast. <laughs> yes. I'm always pushing myself to break out of my comfort zone hmm. always. So it went from art to dancing and then I got sick and went into Chinese medicine. And then after Chinese medicine, I realized that in, as a doctor, I was being a crutch for people because I realized people, the people that came to me, they weren't looking to actually change. They just wanted me to help them continue with the choices they were making when the choices they were making were making them sick. Hmm. And I couldn't, I couldn't participate in that anymore. So then I started going into more education and that's when I started writing books. Mm -hmm. Well, wow. no, it's not every day that people go, you know what, I'm going to go into dancing and then become this world champion. Or, you know what, I'm going to start drawing and then start doing world tours with their art. So for yourself, was there a period of time where you go, hey, this is not just a hobby. This is something I could put more, more time into. And I have talent in this. And you have people who's, who's supporting you in that thought and pushing you to become the best of that area. So is that something you, you kind of thought about or... Uh, did somebody else kind of guide you along that path, path? No, I actually had resistance more than anything. I had people saying, you can't do that. Well, how are you going to make your money being an artist? How are you going to make your money being a dancer? You're not, when I was going into Chinese medicine, they're like, how can you expect other people to come to you when you've been sick yourself? You mm -hmm. know, I've had a lot of, um, and then like with the writing, I I have dyslexia and they're like, you know. I did get a little bit more support with that. I mean, my family always supports me, but people outside of my family, they were always, it's always fighting against what I wanted to do. And I was like, no, I'm, this is what my heart's telling me to do. And I'm going to do it. I just follow my heart. And when my, the thing is, is when my heart tells me to stop, I stop. And when it tells me to go, I go. And that I live on a whim. I live a risky life, according to a lot of people, because whether I have support with money or not. I have faith that where I'm going to be is where I'm supposed to be. And I just go for it. And that's wow. it. Was there a moment in time in your own assessment that you go, you know what? I can become that world champion. My goal was never to become a world champion. Mm -hmm. That wasn't important to me. My goal is to be the best that I can be and to express myself to the, to the fullest of my potential. And until I can get there, then I'm not successful, regardless of whether I'm a world champion or not. Mm -hmm. If I if I never competed and I reached the the my own goal of expressing myself to my fullest ability, that's what is success for me. Well, wow. have you found that having that um, that background of being an artist, uh, being a writer, being a, a dancer has helped with regards to the entrepreneurial side too? Absolutely, every single <laughs> thing that I've done. I use it every day, all the time. It's uh, it's like, you know, taking something from here and here and here and here and putting it all together. And then you, there's this masterpiece in front of you. And you're like, wow, I was just talking to my mom yesterday. And I was like, you have no idea. I said, when I was going through my journey to get here, you know, it was tough. I did not know why the world would bring me these challenges. I said, but, uh, but now I see why, because look at what I can do and look at how many people I'm helping mm -hmm. in so many different ways, not just one way, you know, I'm helping people achieve their dreams in their entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial careers. I'm helping people when they have health issues, they can call me and say, I'm stuck. Nobody can help me. What can I do to empower myself? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there's so many things I can do now. And yeah. I'm just like, wow. <laughs> Now, with all the with the dancing and the art, that stuff is a lot driven by inspiration uh, from within and what comes comes. But the medicine side, that is a lot of, you know, reading and research and uh, reports and all that kind of stuff, which is a complete different type of mindset. Yes. Was that something that happened natural for you, too? Or were you just, you know what, I just have to do this and I'm going to force myself? 
No, I never force myself to do anything. Mm -hmm. When I force myself to do something, I get sick. And then uh, there's no purpose for me to be here anymore. Right. So every single thing I do is inspired. So if even the, inspired, I don't do it. Even the boring types of research is, is, is inspiring for you to keep on moving on and learning about it. It's not boring to me. I love it. <laughs> I guess that helps. <laughs> I don't do anything that I don't want to do. Mm -hmm. And nobody's going to make me. Right. That's kind of how I see it, you know. I'm kind so, of rebellious that way. Um, when it comes to a competitive mindset, uh, do you find yourself more driven when you're competing against somebody else or more driven when you're competing against yourself? Me, myself, myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have my my goals and what I want to do. I don't really enjoy competing against other people because I don't like the the thought of someone, you know, saying that they're better than another person. Mm -hmm. I see I see humans as equal and each each is celebrated for their own uniqueness. And how can I compete with your uniqueness or anyone else's uniqueness? It's not a competition. Mm -hmm. But when I have something inside of me that says there's a barrier here that I want to break. I enjoy the challenge of like, okay, well, let's do this. <laughs> you know, <laughs> when it comes to the the dancing, you competed worldwide. Um, do you find yourself performing better when you have a com competitive situation, or when you're able to free flow? Free flow, free flow, and expressive. Now, if I can, when when I'm competing. Well, anytime that I'm dancing, I'm telling the story. And if I can't get connected to the story and allow that expression to come through my heart, through the music, through my partner, then it's frustrating and it's not fun for me. And then I'm like, I don't want to do this. But if, you know, especially when I'm competing, if I can get into enjoying the experience with everybody else on the floor, not seeing it as us trying to compete against each other, but us creating this huge, amazing experience with each other and with the music and the expression, it just becomes like a really amazing thing, you know, like a, a party. <laughs> <laughs> now, then comes the the whole writing aspect of things uh, where you have this amazing world with uh, with magical, with this whole magical universe. How did that come about? Was it something that you kind of imagined when you were younger that you go eventually you could kind of take and apply it now or did it come a little bit later in life? It, it happened both ways. I've had these little, um, what you call imaginary friends that have been with me a really long time. And uh, there came a point in time where they, you know, like you have these, this might sound weird, but I have conversations with them like on purpose. Mm -hmm. Like I'm like, okay, tell me what's going on in your world so I can get it in this book. Cause again, I'm trying to look at things from different perspectives, even though I know they're part of me. I'm trying to get to know myself a little better through these characters. And um, and it just came a point in time where I was like, you know, I would really like to get this out of my head and into the world. And that's what I'm still working on. I have 30 years worth of stories to get out. And wow. it's it's a lot of work, <laughs> <laughs> but it's amazing work too. It's uh I learn something new every time I write and every time I work with editors and, you know, it just becomes more and more magical all mm. the time. And you were able to combine like some of your performance background and some of your artistic background into, because I've seen some of the, the trailer of your, your, uh, your books and those are absolutely fantastic. I mean, it's very rare that you see a movie trailer for a, a book release and you've absolutely done that. And your art is amazing. Um, when it comes to, your your art your your writing your your dancing have have you been uh helped by somebody else have you been challenged by other people to to propel that skill set to a next level yes so my mother was an artist um and whenever i saw her artwork i wanted to do what she did i was inspired by my mom and then she wrote a book and i was like wow you mean we can write books too <laughs> I never, I never thought that I could write a book before. And after my mom did it, I was, she opened the gateway for me to do that. And then with dancing, when I met Louie, 
I thought he was an amazing dancer. And here I am trying to push myself out of my comfort zone. Louis, my husband and dance partner. Um, and he's a master at pushing people past their limits. Mm -hmm. So I started taking lessons and learning from him. And I still learn from him every day about the baggage that I'm carrying that's that I keep letting me hold me back. And then in Chinese medicine, I met my teacher and uh, he he is the one that showed me like the depth of what Chinese medicine and energy work can really be versus just some of the clinical things you might. I get bored with clinical, you know, that that's something that I won't do. But when I can find real, real connection in a, in a way that's in my heart and my spirit in my intuition, then I'm, I'm extremely excited about that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And now, he helped me find that. Now, because you've gone through all these stages, when somebody comes up to you and go, oh, I don't know, I, I I'm, I'm scared to show off my art or I'm scared to jump out on stage or I'm scared to do this. I'm scared to do that. What's your best advice for them to break out of that comfort zone? Hmm. First, I would have a, a conversation with them about what their fear is. You know, identifying your fear is a, a really powerful thing to do because if you actually look at yourself, it's usually not your own fear, but fear you're holding that was put on you or that you've taken on behalf of someone else. Mm -hmm. And once you realize that most of what drives you comes from outside of you, then you can start exploring who you are. And then you look at the reason, why do you want to get on stage? Are you driven because it's something you want to do? Or again, are you using the beliefs of someone else that says you have to do this? Mm -hmm. And then I help them find out who they are in their hearts and, and, you know, get rid of the baggage of, you know, what we learned growing up so that they can find a place where they find passion and connection within themselves. And when they do that, fear goes away. Mm -hmm. No, I'm going to, I'm going to use the dancing a little bit more because I, I think it's a little bit more easy for people to relate to because when it comes to speaking, uh, mm -hmm. there's a lot of people who go up on stage, they, they want to speak, but they have this very mechanical way of speaking yes. and it doesn't feel authentic. It doesn't feel natural, but that's because that's, they, they, they're not afraid. It just feels very mechanical. Dancing is, is the same thing. You go up there, you could see that person dancing, but you could also tell, oh, they're counting their steps all the way through. They're memorizing. It's not free-flowing. How does one go from mechanical to free-flowing? And it could be in, in the artistic side or in the, in the business side or the speaking side, whatever side it was. There's two ways that I see to do that. One is to follow the program and practice it so much that it's in your muscle memory and you don't have to think about it anymore. The second way is to throw everything away and just be you and not care about it. <laughs> <laughs> is there a, a point in time where the practice is too much and you go, you know what? It's time for you to throw that away and just do it. The cool part about practice is once it's in your muscle memory, then you start being able to improvise and it starts becoming part of who you are. Mm -hmm. So then it's, it it's not throwing it away, but it's, it's, mastering it even more to a point where you know like if you mask if you practice drawing a straight line over and over and you can't do it but then you start being able to do it eventually you get really good at it and then look at what you can create by drawing straight lines mm -hmm. i mean you can cross hatch and create masterpieces just by drawing straight lines right are you one of those artists who goes back and critiques your, your previous work a lot or you just let your your feelings go in and create most of the time that there's i do that with my writing i go critique myself because i'm still in the practice the practice of practicing my writing um but at the same time i go back and i'm like i did that wow that's so cool that i could do that you mm -hmm. know i celebrate my the the abilities that i have because i find that one of the biggest issues that people have is being unkind with themselves and we put ourselves down a lot. So any chance that I have to love myself, especially through creativity, I'm going to take it. I'm going to be like, wow, that's so cool that I could do that. And I'm like a little kid, you uh, know? So when it comes to those, uh, the, those big four things that you've done, what would you say are the biggest life lessons of each one from the dancing to the writing, to the, the art and the, the healing? 
I would say that when I can get out of my own way, when I can get out of the the way of carrying the burdens that would hold me back, um, that's when I find my greatest potential mm. is when I can stop trying to meet the needs. Like when I was dancing, when I first started, I was like, I have to get this exactly right. I have to do it the way she does it instead of doing it the way I do it. And when I can stop trying to mimic what other people are doing and find what it is that's unique about me and bring my uniqueness to the project, then I move powerfully forward mm. versus when I try to do something someone else wants me to do. Well, now, before we started this interview, we, we talked about uh, catching up on a few things with our businesses and uh, how much stuff, how busy we are and whatnot. You're, you're connected with so many of these things. Plus, uh, you're married. You, you do a lot of different things. How do you balance the, the time with your husband and the time that you spend on your, your business, your writing, your healing, all that stuff? How do you balance all that kind of stuff? So most people consider uh, their work to be work. And I play all day long. <laughs> And when my husband comes in, I play with him too. I'm like, hey, do you want to be part of this project? Do you want to play? Or he's like, no, I'm doing this. What, you know, how about you come over and help me? And and we we are really lighthearted about everything. And when we start getting too serious, we're like, hey, you know, we have reminders in place. Hey, you're getting too serious right now. Check, have a check in with yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. And then uh, we also have time limits. Like I wake up and from this time to this time, I'm going to work. And then when, let's say, I believe it's around 530. I'm like, okay, no more work or six, you know, six is the really latest. We're like, okay, well, let's, what do you want to do now? You want to play pool? You want to go to a movie? You mm -hmm. know, let's go for a walk. So we, we make sure that we create that time with and for each other. Mm -hmm. I, I like how you, you talked about you're being too serious right now. That, that sentence right there. How do you determine what is serious and what isn't serious? I mean, you, you say you're having fun with your work, but even with work, you need to be serious sometimes. <laughs> so, so how do you differentiate that? I consider serious any time that you start feeling that feeling pressure, mm -hmm. any type of pressure. When you feel pressure, you're out of balance. It, it, you can look at it this way. When you're in balance and you're on a, a really good path, your path is like this. When you start feeling pressure, you start having a little skew that goes this way. And this is not in your truth. And if you continue with the pressure to go this way, you're getting further and further away from your balance over here. And then eventually you're gonna find yourself in a completely different place than where you were headed in the first place. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna have to course correct and get all those habits to come back here again. And it's, it's gonna be a constant this. So at the very first sign of pressure is when you need to ask yourself, what am I doing that is harming myself at this moment? And how can I change my mindset to bring more inspiration into this moment, even though I might be crunching numbers, you know, or doing something most people would think, or that I would normally think is bad. I have to get in balance with this before I can move one step forward, one little inch, because if I move forward one tiny inch, mm -hmm. I'm skewed. And I- so with, with the pressure thing, Lots of people would go, you know what? I need that pressure to meet a deadline. If there's no pressure, then I'm just going to, you know, waste time or or wait until it's it's absolutely needed. Then I'm going to work on it or pressure is needed for them to feel challenged. Mm -hmm. So how do you differentiate what is good pressure and what is pressure pressure? So for me, um, I there I do I do believe there's good pressure because you're excited about the challenge. If you're excited about a challenge and you're like, "Yes, I can do this," and it's motivating, it's all about how you feel. If, if there we have an emotional guidance system, and if our if our emotional guidance system is above a certain degree, then that's healthy pressure. If it starts getting into overwhelm, despondency, depression, anger, frustration, mm -hmm. then you're into negative pressure, and that's when you need to stop because if you create your reality from those lower emotions, that's what you're going to create more of. So I, if, if I start getting into those, I stop everything until I can get to these higher, higher feelings, mm -hmm. even though that pressure can still be there. 
hey, I'm, I have the pressure to go to Disneyland, <laughs> you know, that, that can be a pressure, believe it or not, because you have to drive four hours or five hours to get there. You know, there's a lot of steps to take along the way. But if you still have that excitement and that motivation that you want to do it versus you have to do it, mm -hmm. that I think that's the big difference. Cool. And and you have a, a great partner who kind of keeps keeps you in, in track and you keep him in track. So mm -hmm. did, did the two of you kind of set that kind of role where, okay, you watch over me, I watch over you just to make sure that we're not overly serious, but we're still pressured enough to achieve the stuff that we want to achieve. Yes. And, and in fact, I said that with every single person I work with, I say, we have to have each other's back here. I said, when, <laughs> when I start seeing you get too stressed or, or too into your work that you're, you're not actually realizing what's so people get so serious that they work that they can be having headaches and heart, heart palpitations and not even know it. Right. And then there you can start seeing the mood go down. So we have each other's back that says, Hey, if I notice a physical symptom about you, you know, there's, there's universal expressions when people are doing this and, you know, or when their posture starting to slump or when you're, you know, they're sighing a lot. We, we just pay attention to each other. And we say, I've got your back, you know, because you can get so focused on something that you don't even realize that mm -hmm. you're harming yourself. So how does one get in tune with that kind of feeling about the body and understanding their body and understanding when they need to kind of uh, lighten off the, the gas pedal and go, you know what, I need a reset. I would say uh, um, it might be a lot of work to do it this way in the first place, but you can set your alarm for every 10 minutes and then just check in and say, how am I feeling? Do I feel vibrant and alive and healthy or do I feel run down? And you know, I, I would say there's a lot of people, especially in today's climate, that feel very run down and they don't give themselves uh, the opportunity to actually recuperate and rest without putting a lot of guilt and pressure on themselves. Because if if people think about it, go for an entire day and don't do anything have no agenda if all you want to do is sit around then just sit mm -hmm. around if you just want to go for walks then just go for walks do nothing and see if you feel any guilt that day and uh, if you do then there's there's a place that you're out of balance in your life i see well that's that's a that's a pretty good idea i never thought about spending a whole day with no plan and seeing what happens um when it comes to failures challenges uh, I'm sure you've gone through a lot of them. Um, is there one specific challenge or one specific failure that you faced that really sticks out in your in your life that you go, wow, that's a big turning moment in my life. And this is what I learned from it. My biggest challenge throughout all of my life has been uh, when I find, this is hard to put in words, but when I'm aware versus when I'm not aware. When I'm not aware, I work on autopilot and when I'm aware, I work in inspiration. So I'm constantly checking in with myself. So when I go into a, a, an, a, a situation, for instance, if I go into a situation and I see someone, you know, road rage, we have typical responses to road rage. If I go into the typical response, well, this means this, then I'm participating in that in a way that's not very creative. If I go into that situation and say, I cannot possibly know what this means, then that allows for more love and more compassion to come in. So my greatest challenge is always remaining in awareness and in compassion and in love and in the true nature of who I am. And whenever I, it's my belief that when I remain who I am, I am more capable of joining and love with other people at a much greater degree because we're love at the base mm -hmm. of who we are okay so so based on what you just said uh when i see somebody having road rage or being uh, being a jerk uh it's the wrong thing for me to go good job good job <laughs> no no i'm not saying it's wrong it's unkind it's unkind to yourself and others and to judge right. yourself as wrong is also unkind <laughs> Where are you? Um, um when it comes to your next big thing uh, you have you're you're into so many different things. What's the next big thing that's really driving you right now? That's making you excited for life, excited for every single day to come. There's two things. Um, I'm working on a project for my press. It's called Winter Wolf Press, 
-hmm. and I'm creating courses. We, we've been closed for submissions for a really long time, but we're going to be opening up submissions again and starting to publish books again. And we're also going to be creating courses because there's a lot of people who want to get their message out and it's self-express and, and, you know, whether they want to express themselves to their family or to the broad public, they need communication skills. They need that a lot of people are feeling drawn to write, uh, to do podcasts, to do, you know, to create things, to express themselves more. So we're creating programs and courses where we handhold people through the difficult processes of writing their books, mm -hmm. uh, getting their stories out, taking a look in to find out what's motivating them to do these things. And that really creates compelling books and compelling stories that are really useful out in the world. And then the second thing I'm writing and I'm working on on my own is writing my own books and writing screenplays. And that's really exciting too. When When is the screenplay? Is it based on the, the stories that you're writing right now? Yeah, I have a, a universe that, you know, I have different perspectives that I write on through the whole universe, through different characters. And they're all pretty much in the same universe with the same rules. So yeah, it's cool. it's part of that. So in the near future, future we'll see you at the on the red carpet doing a movie premiere. I hope so. I mean, it'll be <laughs> it would be fun to do that. But even if not, I I still have to get the story out because that's what I'm compelled to do. Cool. So, yeah. Um, if you were on stage and you were to give one big message for everybody to remember Laura for or uh, the legacy that you want to leave behind, uh, what is that message that you want people to remember? Follow your heart, and and not just follow it blindly, but actually look at yourself and ask yourself, is this me? And stop, and, and not just that, but we try to define ourselves all the time when we're, we're beings and creatures that are undefinable. Mm -hmm. So it, it doesn't matter what you think you are now, you're always gonna be something different in the future and you have the freedom to choose who and how you want to be in the experience and how you experience life. Awesome. Great words to live by. Uh, before I let you go, I got some rapid fire questions for you. Give me the first thing that comes to mind. Okay. All right. You're stranded on the deserted island. One thing to eat for the rest of your life. No consequence. Coconuts. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're on this road trip in the car. And for whatever reason, there's only one song that kept constantly playing over and over again. What's that one song you don't mind listening to? Anna Bacoa. Cool. Uh, Monopoly calls and goes, hey, Laura, we want to draw, make a game on, on your life. Uh, Laura Opley. Right? Okay. Uh, what would you choose to be the five or six main playing pieces that represents you? A fairy, a dancer, a book, a halo, and... Mm, a friend. <laughs> awesome. Um, when it comes to um, your your movie, that's for sure going to come. Uh, you get to cast somebody to play the main character in that movie. Who would you cast? Someone unknown. That someone unknown shows up at your door doorstep and goes, "Hey, I got casted to play your, in your movie. Um, I'm hungry. What is that special dish you can prepare for them?" Oh man. That's a good one. I don't have a special dish. I just, I think I just ask them what they want. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You're, right. you're a person of many talents and can create so many different things. <clears throat> and finally, what is success like? But give me a number from one to five. Five. One, two, three, four, five. So if you have to relate success to a dictionary, how is success like a dictionary? that you can always redefine everything. Well, very well done. Well, thank you very thank much you. for that. Um, for anybody who wants to get in touch with you, whether it's with regards, because you, you coach in, in, in dancing, you do a whole bunch of other stuff when it comes to businesses as well. What's the best way to get in touch? Probably my website at lauracantu.com mm -hmm. uh, or winterwolfpress.com. You can okay. get in touch with me both places. And is there any final words that you would like to share? Uh, I want to thank you. You you really made me feel comfortable and I really enjoyed this time with you. And uh, I would like to know like some of your thoughts before we go. 
<laughs> With regards to what? <laughs> Let me think. Uh, what meal would you serve a celebrity that came to your house? Well, the first thing I can probably do is this uh, baked salmon that I love doing. So. Oh, cool. Cool. And what do you define as success? When it comes to success, I think it's an it's it's like a book. It's an open book. Uh, you get to find what you need to find if you wanted to, or you could p- create whatever you want. So that's what I think success is like. And what are your closing thoughts? My closing thoughts? I've had an amazing time. Um, awesome. I love listening to people of success and people who's done a lot of different things, um, sometimes in, in the art side, sometimes in the entrepreneurial side, in the business side. And I, I learn something every single time I speak with people. So um, I appreciate your time and I've had a lot of fun. Me too. Thank you so much. Awesome. So for everybody else, she is Laura. My name is Fong Chuan. Until next time, today is the day to lock your peak potential. We'll see you later.